Bruchem Aboim. We are, uh, thank you for coming. We are on our 10th lecture on the uh, Gematria series that we began. And um, we're up to the letter, to the letter Chet, which is the number 8. So the number 6 represents the physical world, six days of creation. And number 7 represents the superiority of the spiritual over the physical, the Shabbat. The number eight alludes to combining the physical together with the spiritual into one harmonious unit. This is the essence of Judaism, to unite the physical and the spiritual together, where they both strive to bring and advance godliness into this world, based on of Shinshul Fal Hirsch. Now, Chet, the number eight, symbolizes God, who is one in the seven heavens and one earth. In fact, when we say the Shema, the word Echod, when we hold, draw it out, the Aleph stands for one God, the Chet for seven heavens, one earth, and again the Dalit four for the four directions of the compass. The person should have that in mind when he says it. This also is alluded to by the makeup of the letter Chet. It is a combination of two letters, the Vav and the Zion. Vav is the numerical value of six, and Zion seven, which allude to the natural world. And together they are elevated to the letter Chet, which is the numerical value of eight something spiritually above this world. Now the numerical value of eight symbolizes man's ability to transcend the limitations of the physical existence into the metaphysical divine. The Vav alludes to the six masculine emotional traits that God has taken upon himself and the Zion, the seventh trait, Malchut, kingship which is feminine. The Vav and the Zion allude to man and woman respectively with the chatzotzrot, this line between the two that connects them, shaped like a chuppah, like a canopy that bride and groom stand under, which alludes to God, who brings harmony between a husband and a wife. The word chuppah begins with the letter chet, to teach us that marriages are made in heaven. And the word peh, which is the last two letters of peh and a hey, meaning mouth, that they are nurtured by husband and wife being having honest and open communication with each other. Very important for a good marriage. The letter Chet is connected to the word Chaim, life. We believe that the only true life is that which is above us, basically the world to come, alluded to by the letter Chet. Reb Shinshul for her says that with the eighth day, a new beginning is made, similar to the octave uh, in music on a higher level, seven notes, and then you start a new octave. And there are eight strings on each corner of our garments, again, which we call the tzitzit, which allude to our being able to see God, as it says in the portion of the Shema. We them oto, and you will see, we pronounce it, it but really oto is him. <clears throat> that the way for us to see God is through these eight strings that are on each corner. Also, there will be eight strings on the harp of the Mashiach, when the Messiah will come, where before there were seven. The word Torah itself has a numerical value of 611. If you take six, one, and one, again, the number eight, something above this world. The Hebrew word for the number eight is Shemona. It is connected to the word Shemen, oil. One of the properties of oil is that it floats on top of all other liquids. And the word Shemona has the same letters as the words Mishnah and Neshama. Now, Mishnah was the first writing of the oral Torah. And neshama is a word for the Jewish soul. Since these two words are connected, we learn Mishnah for the soul of one who is departed. We also believe that the eighth day after a baby is born, we perform a circumcision on him called the bris mila, And at that time, he receives his Jewish soul, a neshama. The moil, the person who uh, conducts the uh, procedure of the circumcision, calls for the baby to be brought for the circumcision, and he calls out to the baby as he comes, Baruch Haba, which means blessed is he, Haba, who is coming. Haba is a numerical value of eight. Again, the mole uses a knife called an Azmil, which can be broken up into two words, Mal for Mila, circumcision, and Az, Aleph Zion, Zion has a numerical value of seven, Aleph one, again, eight. Also on the 8th, uh, Yitzchak was circumcised at the beginning of the 8th day, 
first one to be circumcised by God's command that way. After being alive for 180 hours. And in that merit, he lived 180 years. The gematria of the word neshama is 395. If you add 3, 9, and 5, it's 17. The numerical value of the word tov, good. It is good for a baby to have a circumcision on the eighth day because there are more hemoglobins in the body of the baby on the eighth day of his birth than at any other time in his life. Also, the eighth blessing in the Amida, the standing prayer, which we call tefillah, is rifa'enu. We ask God to heal us, which connects to the ritual of circumcision, which we perform on the eighth day. This mitzvah was first given to Avram Avinu, Abraham our father, as the eighth of his ten tests. It was also the eighth divine instruction given to mankind in general. The covenant with Noah after the flood was given to preserve the national order of the world of seven, as symbolized, again, the seven Noahide laws, as symbolized in the colors of the rainbow, which was used as a sign by God to tell Noah that he would no, never again destroy the world. But the divine covenant with Israel is concerned with the supernatural realm of eight. And the makeup of the Chet, of a Vav and a Zion, as we mentioned before, with the Chatzot connecting them. Six and seven is 13. This is the age that Yishmoel, Abraham's first son, was circumcised. The Akamas HaMishkan, the establishment of the tabernacle in the desert, was performed on the eighth day to show to the world that it was a spiritual conclusion to the seven days of creation, based on partial illuminations. The divinity of God, the Shekhinah, entered the tabernacle on the eighth day of dedication, much like a newborn baby. The day the tabernacle was dedicated was as joyous to God as the day that he created heaven and earth. When God created the days of the week, he gave each one a partner, so to speak. So Sundays paired with Monday, Tuesday with Wednesday, Thursday with Friday. And the Shabbat, the, the Sabbath, complained to God that it had no partner. And God said, I have a very special partner for you, the children of Israel. So the eighth is the children of Israel, something above this world that connects to the Shabbat. Again, the spiritual end of the world. The eighth day of the dedication of the tabernacle was the first time that the heavenly fire came down from heaven onto the copper altar. And so too, the eighth day of creation. Saturday night was the first time that fire was introduced into the world. Which is why we say a blessing on fire when we make Havdalah on Saturday night. There are also eight days of Hanukkah and eight candles that we light. The Kliyakar asks, why was the eighth day called the eighth day of dedication when the Torah only calls for seven days of dedication? And so he answers that the day is called the eighth to demonstrate that this day was elevated and superior to the seven days that preceded it. The Rebbe adds that though the eighth day stood alone, it was able to reach that level only through the service of the previous seven days of dedication. The portion of Shmini, which deals with the eighth day of dedication of the tabernacle, in some years is read eight times. The name of the Sedra Shmini, eighth, is the only portion in the Torah that is named after a number. The word Shmini has the same gematria, 410, as the word shuffle, meaning humble. This is to show us that with humility, one can not only circumcise his body, but also his heart. The, the gematria of eight plays a very prominent role in the temple. The high priest, the Kohen Gadol, wore eight priestly garments. The anointing oil consisted of eight ingredients. There were eight poles to carry the furnishings of the tabernacle when they traveled through the desert. Two for the ark, two for the golden altar, two for the golden table, and two for the copper altar. Animals that were brought up as sacrifices had to be at least eight days old before they could be brought up as a sacrifice. There were also eight musical instruments used by the Levites that they played during the temple service. On Pesach and Passover, we eat matzah, whereas chametz, unleavened, un, unleavened bread, is strictly forbidden. All the letters in the words chametz and matzah are really identical, except for the hay and the chet. The difference between the words, though, major in terms of religious law, 
is dependent on a minute space in the left leg of the, of the uh, hay, which di differentiates a hay from a chet. This tiny difference is symbolic of the difference between chametz and matzah. Lack of precision in preparation and baking of matzah turns it into chametz, based on al -shil. The divine wisdom of Torah, which transcends everything else, is like mila. In fact, Torah itself is termed a brit, a covenant, referring to the otherworldly covenant as forged between God and his people Israel. In Tehillim, in Psalm 119, which almost exclusively describes the preeminence of Torah, similarly follows an eight-verse alphabetical sequence going through the whole entire alphabet, eight verses in each one of the letters. The high priest was secluded for seven days prior to his service on the unique day of Yom Kippur, which was equivalent to the eighth day. The eight blood sprinklings of the Yom Kippur were performed by the high priest on the curtain of the Holy of Holies. The sprinklings were done one above and seven below, symbolizing how the eighth dimension goes over and above the natural order. It was only the high priest who himself was elevated by his usual wearing of the eight special garments who was permitted to enter into the Holy of Holies. Yitzchak, our father, was the first one to be circumcised, I mentioned, on the eighth day after his birth. We look to him as the true of, as the true father of our nation. He was willing to give up his life for God on the altar at the Akeda, when his father brought him up as a, sac was being, as a sacrifice. We ask God to remember his sacrifice every day in our prayers as a merit for us, his descendants. And based on the Talmud and Shabbat, where God threatens to destroy the Jewish nation for their sins, God goes to Abraham and then Jacob, Moses, David, and says to all of them that their children have sinned and they, needed to be, they need to be destroyed. And each one answers that if they have sinned grievously, then they should be destroyed. It is only Yitzchak who stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with God and argues with him. And Yitzchak concludes his defense of the nation with the statement, in the end, that I too had a wayward son, and I loved him. You should do the same. God accepts that defense. And even though Yitzchak's trait is severity, his name is eight times the gematria, the numerical value of the name of God of mercy, the yud ke vav ke, a name we don't pronounce, which, which again is 208. Even the Muslims understand the greatness and importance of Yitzchak to us, his children, though they have no real connection with him as a forebearer. In Hebron at the Machpelah, where the forefathers are buried, we can visit the burial sites of Abram and Sarah, and also Yaakov and Leah, every day of the year. But the burial site of Yitzchak and Rivka is only available to Jews ten days of the year. In Mishle it, sa it states, Sheva tipol tzadik v'kom, that the righteous may fall seven times, but he will rise. The ritually impure may require at times a seven-day count of impurity, and on the eighth day, the person can arrive at a purified state. King David was the eighth of the sons of Yishai. Now, eight is a gematria of two words. One word is ava, which means desire, and the other was ahav, love. Both words can be broken up into one word of av he, our Father God. It will be through our desire and love for God our Father and his children that we will be able to herald in the coming of Mashiach Sikenu, who will bring in a new dimension of eight, a world above the natural world in which we exist. May you come quickly in our time. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week we'll go forward again with the letter nine. God bless.